always welcome to another video the apple event is finally here we have new airpods a new apple watch and the star of the show in my opinion the new iphone we're going to talk about every single thing that happened in the apple event so many updates so many products i have to say that for some of the updates i was so hyped up until i heard like what the update was that i was like are you sure this is an update because I don't think it is. Just because you added a little bit of something doesn't make it a whole new update. But we're gonna talk it out. Let's start with the Apple Watch because I previously did a video on rumors and leaks about this specific watch because it marks the 10th anniversary since the very first Apple Watch that was launched. And I thought that Apple would do something special. They definitely did some interesting upgrades, but it's Apple Watch Series 10. It's not X, just Series 10. So one of the things is that it's the thinnest Apple Watch you have ever seen, 10% thinner than its predecessor. Also, it has up to 18% of battery life, and it has bigger screen, up to 30% bigger if you're coming from an Apple Watch 6, which is insane because you just have more watch face and the bezels also got thinner it has new apps supports apple intelligence of course apple intelligence won't come fully packed when this apple watch launches let's just say that it will come step by step updates of the apple intelligence will get revealed but the question is how all these updates will get into our daily life so here is every single update that apple did to this apple watch it's the thinnest ever. It supports now sleep apnea, it can detect it. Watch OS 11, biggest display, great 5 titanium. There are two new apps, the Tides and the Depth app. It's the fastest charging ever, up to 80% in just 30 minutes. It's carbon neutral, water temperature, jet black aluminium, wide angle OLED display, speaker playback, brighter off angle, up to 80% battery life. Apple Intelligence and custom swim workout. So as you can see, they have done major updates on this Apple Watch. The question is, isn't that different than the Apple Watch Series 9? Yes, there is with all these updates. The fact that you get more screen, it's also thinner. The Apple Watch is already lighter, but making it thinner will make it even more lighter. So definitely they did some good updates to the regular series. Speaking of the Apple Watch, we can not forget the Apple Watch Ultra. They didn't do that major updates, they just announced a new color. But of course, it's adding up to the family of the Apple Watches. Now we have the Apple Watches SE, the regular Series 10, and now the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Yes, it's not 3, it's 2. They didn't do that many updates. So here's what we have. Grade 5 Black Titanium, we have Sleep Apnea up to 36 hours of battery life and up to 72 hours in low powder mode, custom swim workouts, we have titanium loop, we also have ultimate sports watch, most accurate GPS, Apple intelligence, up to 3000 nits of brightness, Apple watch, Hermes Ultra, we have watch OS 11, trail out, offline maps, it's carbon neutral, it also supports the Tidal app and speaker playback. So as you can see, it's pretty similar because the most important thing that they did as an update is to change the colors and to show you some of the things that they already launched with the regular apple watch to the apple watch Ultra, the apple watch se did not get updated but it's still part of the apple watch family so you can go and buy it moving on to the airpods i have been using my airpods pro second generation for the past few months and i have to say this might be the best decision i have ever made switching to airpods because i have an iphone i can use all the features that he has and Apple announced new AirPods. Now we have AirPods Generation 4, and it has some of the pro features. It has now active noise cancellation. I have been loving this feature so much. Whenever I'm traveling or I want to focus on what I'm listening, I just use this mode so I don't have to hear the outside that much. You also have transparency. We have conversation awareness. Basically, this means the AirPods can now detect when you start talking and it lowers the volume of what you're listening. We also have adaptive mode. So basically, the pro features are coming into these AirPods. We also have, as I said, active noise cancellation, Siri interactions, best fitting AirPods ever, Apple Silicon H2, 
effortless setup. We have seamless audio switching, conversational wellness, adaptive audio, personalized spatial audio. Now we have a case speaker, voice isolation, new acoustic architecture, up to 30 hours of battery life with charging case, transparency mode, USB-C and wireless charging and force sensor. So as I said, the AirPods are starting to look like the AirPods Pro little by little. When they started talking about the AirPods Pro second generation, I thought that they're getting an upgrade, they're getting a third generation. I was so like, did I make a mistake ordering the second generation where there will be a third? But no, they didn't. These buddies right now can serve you as a hearing device. AKA this means that you can do a hearing test because did you know that 1.5 billion have severe hearing loss? When was the last time when you actually checked your ears with the doctor to see if you can see right? Probably a long time ago, not five years only. I have to say that maybe I had never done it to admit, but the fact that they can, these now serve as a hearing device, this is very great. And here are other updates that they have done. Hearing aid, headphone, audio levels, adaptive EQ, effortless setup, hearing protection on by default, share results with doctor, media assist, hearing test, hearing test results privately stored in the health app, live listening, personalized hearing profile, noise app, conversation awareness, conversation boost. So basically, except only for listening now, you can test if you have any hearing problems. Other updates they did was the AirPods Max. I was so excited about this because they haven't been updated since they launched until they shared what the updates was. So basically they added new colors and USB-C charging. That's it. The price is still $549. So I'm curious, like, do you call this an update? Because practically you just change the charging port and added new colors. That's it. Nothing else. So there were rumors that the second generation will cost less than the first one. I was sure that this will happen because we talk about Apple. But for me, that was the disappointing part because you updated something and you realize that it's not an update. They just added new color. Okay, USB-C, I get they're trying to move to USB-C now and to remove all their lightning cables. So more products will come. Also, they're trying to get all carbon neutral to 2030, which is a great goal, but AirPods Max, is this really an update? We're moving to the most exciting part. And I have to say, whenever in September there is an app of it, I'm most excited about the iPhones. Yes, I probably won't get the newest one because I'm happy with the current one that I have. I should admit that I'm always excited to see what new updates and the new colors that they can offer. So on the iPhone 16 and the 16 Plus, now the cameras are vertical, not diagonal. We have the main and the ultra wide camera, both 48 megapixels. Also now we can record spatial photos and videos. And this is the reason why the cameras are positioned this way. Many people compare it with the iPhone X, with the iPhone 12 as well. The 11 also featured here. So basically uh, some creators said that we're going back to back with the design. Now we have the new capture button. Another rumor that has been confirmed. Basically the capture button only has access to the camera, but you can use all of its features just with the press on one button. And because on a lock screen, now you can change the flashlight and the camera with the new updates, the camera won't be there anymore. Yes, you do have an action button on the base models as well. So basically it's kind of like repetitive if you put the camera over there, but the action button is customizable and you can put everything. Else. And also we have gorgeously new colors. Yes, the black and the white, I think they're just like a must. Finally, people might have been getting the pink they have always wanted. But of course, since it's not in the pro models, there'll be always people who won't like it. But here are all the updates. We have new ultra white with macro, spatial photos and videos, Apple intelligence, iOS 18 customization, messaging via satellite, camera control, dynamic island, Wi-Fi 7, action button, big boost in battery life, A18 chip, 48 megapixel fusion camera with 2x telephoto, new vibrant colors, USB-C, hardware accelerated ray tracing, latest generation of ceramic shield, and 3 Ace game. So we have tons of updates. And yes, last year, the chip was A16. They have to do A18 
because the chip in the Pro phones was A17 Pro. And as people expected, you can put a Pro chip into a non-Pro device, and that's why they went this way. Moving on to the Pro models, they have been updated so much that it's the most advanced iPhone you can ever get. Of course, it still has the action button, it's USB-C, it has the camera control because since the base model has it, the Pro model also we have it. The battery life has been updated up to 33 hours on the iPhone 16 Pro Max and up to 27 hours on the iPhone 16 Pro. We have great 5 titanium, new colors, Apple intelligence. Just a reminder that these phones won't be launched with Apple intelligence. It will get revealed to us with the updates that they will be doing. Initially, it will be to US English, but they will reveal more languages until the end of the year. And on the next year, we also have even more languages. They have bigger sizes, 6.3 inches onto the iPhone 16 Pro and 6.9 inches into the 16 Pro Max, which is the biggest display ever. Also, the bezels are noticeably thinner. The camera has been updated. So many updates. Here are all of them. Telephoto on both models. Studio quality mix with audio mix, camera control, next generation photographic styles, Wi-Fi 7, latest generation ceramic shield, 6.3 and 6.9 inches, spatial photos and videos, faster ray tracing, new 48 megapixel ultra wide USB-C with USB 3, best iPhone battery life on Pro Max, A18 Pro chip, Apple intelligence, 4K 120 bits per frame Dolby Vision. We have an action button, ProMotion, great 5 titanium with four new finishes. Yes, we have desert titanium. It's not the pink that people wanted, but I have to say it's a very pretty color. It kind of reminds me of gold and rose gold mixed together, but I have to say very exciting upgrades on all the iPhone lineup. So that will be the video. Hope you enjoy. Comment down below what was your favorite launch of this year's Apple event. As I already said, it was the iPhone, but I'm kind of excited about the Apple Watch, not gonna lie, because I don't need it, but I still question if I actually need one. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, to be honest, because except for walking around the house, to be honest, and maybe doing some exercise, I don't see any other reason to get it, but probably I'll find something that will confuse me. But I do have to say, despite the AirPods Max, which I have to say were a little bit of a disappointing launch, everything else was fantastic. I love how they do their keynotes, the presentations are on point, because we all know that to get people to buy your product, you need to present it well. And I think this is where Apple leads, because their keynotes for every single event are good. And stay tuned, because just like last year, we might get an event on October right before Halloween. But that will be the video. Hope you enjoyed. Please smash that like button. I can like this video. Share it with friends. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Turn on the bell so you'll be notified whenever I post new videos. And I'm going to see you next time. Bye!